Rightio, Cameron, good to go, mate? Yep. Excellent. Right, so as I say, Cameron's just going to um, do a few manoeuvres here, showing the turning circle of the, of the crane and the benefits of um, the fact that it does steer all the way to 44 degrees. So whilst this is a 28-tonne um, capacity crane, it actually outperforms its opposition Mac 25 by 1.7 metres in radius, which is quite considerable, particularly for those clients that are going to be using a crane on tight sites in factories. Yeah, another, another key feature is uh, the 2.5 metre width and the, the no need for the IAP. Or, uh, or any permit, so you're unrestricted in your travel. So you've not only got a, a better lifting crane that's more manoeuvrable, but it's also unrestricted in the travel, only two and a half metres wide. We've stuck with the same axles that we had in the PC25, the Kessler axles from Germany. These axles we've found have been bulletproof and there's been no reason to want to go to any other brand. Our particular uh, axle that we fit has ABS brakes as standard. Again, we think in a modern vehicle, that's a no-brainer. You see the counterweight uh, that we, the cam's got on the back, there's a 2.3 tonne counterweight. With that on the front of the crane, we're 12 tonne an axle, so it's a 24 tonne package. I think you can see that on the screen at the moment. The, the moment limiter in the bottom left corner shows you we're at 8 tonne on the front, 15 and a half on the rear. So. Uh, I think that's 23.75 tonnes, so we actually rode with a super lift like counterweight um, and the char, uh, especially in stationary uh, lifting, well outperforms Mac 25 super lifter. We, we do have an additional 1.1 tonne super lift counterweight coming which pins on the on, on that uh, slab there, it's a horizontal slab which was coming out okay. later in the year. So we're actually going to be uh, launching that uh, super lift counterweight, the 1.1 tonne slab underneath in the new charts. It's going to be launched at uh, Syca this year. And uh, that crane's sold. And uh, the new owner's actually here tonight, Lynn and Rebecca Coveney from uh, Town and Country Cranes. That, that crane's going to be working in the Borger fleet of cranes. We made a few changes with the moment limiter just to make it easier to read with the, uh, the articulations on the top blue column there. You can see we're at nine degrees slew at the moment and the side slope um, on the earlier model wasn't anywhere near as clear as this so it's actually uh, a really key feature. We're at 0 0.1, 0 0.2 of a degree of side slope at the moment and we'll show you a, um, a pretty dramatic um, example of what happens uh, when you lift a heavy load and you get induced roll from tyres, tyre deflection and, uh, and what happens to capacity and how we derate it. So side slope for those that don't really know, it's um, an interesting thing. It's not just what uh, slope that the crane is on at the time it's lifting, it's what the induced side slope is going to be once it's actually picked up its load on that particular slope. and. Uh, Things that need to be taken into account is the tire deflection, the, um, any flex that's going to be happening within the crane itself, and uh, these things all add up to what the total induced side slope's happening um, on the crane. So we're just demonstrating the full power boom now. We've got 18.64 metres of power boom. First two sections are synchronised and compensated, so it doesn't need to lower the hook. The hook stays where it is. When he gets the first two sections out and he goes to the third boom, he's got a winch down that's on an independent um, cylinder, and um, just like the, the opposition's crane, but uh, quite a substantial boom and a, a, a big jump in capacity from um, the PC25. Another uh, smart feature about this crane is the 75% low chart when you put the hold brake on. We'll demonstrate that a bit later, but uh, 
what it gives you over, over your pick and carry chart is an extra 12% of lifting ability when the hole breaks on. And the, uh, the moment limiter shows you where you would be, uh, whether you've got the hole break on or not, you can see exactly where you'd be in the pick and carry mode. So there won't be any surprise when you turn it off and, uh, and you need to go for a drive around. Jimmy, turn the hole break off there. Yeah, OK. We're not going to see much because it's close. So at that, at, that, at that radius, we're good for 2.79 tonne with the hold brake off on pick and carry chart. When you put the hold brake back on, we're good for 3.14. It's only small numbers because it's a small, small capacity, but we'll show it a bit clearer later. That's a 12% jump in capacity. So he's just going to reconfigure now and he's going to uh, luff up to about 60 something degrees. We can go to 65 degrees, access the chains directly from the locker without any manual handling and then uh, pick up the six tonne block just directly opposite us. Go inside over the shoulder shot. So you can see here inside the cabin, over the sh over the shoulder of Cameron, you got the joystick in his left hand. The, the button's a two-speed winch button. The uh, the button next to the the red button is the uh, telescoping button. When he gets the chains on, we'll show you. Next step. Just while he's getting that ready, we talked about Superlift before, um, which is something that we're going to be uh, releasing at Syca. All, all cranes that we're building from number one PC28 onwards are going to have the ability to have Superlift retrofitted. So the lugs are already a part of the counterweight. And um, so anyone that owns a crane or has bought a crane before the first one's released, they will be able to um, purchase that later on as an upgrade.
Just, just hold it there again, Cam. We had, a, we had something to show then. If you put the whole brake on again. So you can see here with the whole brake on, we're good for 17.3 tonne. We've got 6.4 on the hook. The, the, the inner graph, graphic that's slightly ahead of the, the fatter graphic is the pick and carry chart. So now once you turn, turn the whole brake off, Cam, we go from 7.38 to 15.4. So it's a, it's a really significant thing and it's, we're always, we never got enough radius, we never not got enough capacity. But you, you know, if you're stationary lifting, there's no reason why you can't go to a 75% chart. The, the Australian standard allows you to do up to 0.4 metres a second and still call it stationary. So with the whole brake on, you, you you can use the whole range of the chart at 75% and that equates to about a 12% jump in capacity from pick and carry. It's, it's, a, it's a really, really neat feature and, and uh, very handy for you fellas. Just put your whole brake on again then please, Cam. Yeah, so Phil, just explain that again about how that gives you a visual uh, reading of what is happening at 75 and the operator can still see once he takes his whole brake off. So the, the, the fat fat green graphic is the 75% chart and the, in, and the inner skinny graphic is the 66% chart. When you turn the, the whole brake off, drop it off again now, Cam. You see it just catches up to the inner graphic, so the whole lot's on 66. So easy to understand, take a minute to explain to uh, any operator and very, very useful. The, the good thing about it is the operator gets a visual indication of what's going to happen between the two charts. All right. Okay, mate, if you're the next one we're going to demonstrate the effect of side slope. So Cam's going to come over to that, uh, that piece of driveway on the right where it's got quite a bit of slope and um, we're going to show you what the uh, side slope is with the with the weight off the ground and then put it on the ground and see what, how it reduces as a, as a result of tyre deflection. And if you, if you looked at this yard, most people would say it looks pretty flat. Um, so you could imagine on, a, on an unformed yard that's not concrete, how easy it is to get into a side slope situation where the operator can get himself into a bit, a bit of bother. You know, you, you take a typical job site, if it's had a bit of rain, you, the ground gets soft, it's pretty easy to um, get unstable on a, uh, put a wheel in a, in a hole or just, a, just a, a bit of soft ground. With the dynamic load indicator on this crane, it'll, it'll derate automatically. Can we just get you to stop there, Cam, if you don't mind for a minute? Um, Phil, can you just explain the two bar graphs up the top? Yeah, yeah, so the top, the top one's the, the slew angle, 39 degrees, so... It goes to 44 degrees, but um, um, so we've got quite a lot of articulation there. We've got 3.1 degrees of side slope. So, Cam, just put the load down there. We'll go forward again later. I just want to show you the, the, the difference with the load on the ground. So we're going from 3.1 degrees... to 2.1, so there's a degree of induced side slope just through tyre deflection at that point. When we get, we'll get it up off the ground again now, mate. When we go a bit further with a longer boom and a, f and a greater radius, that, that one degree will become probably two degrees of side slope. So the crane calculates the side slope and the duration for you. And then after this, we'll show you um, the, uh, the, the brilliant 
slew safe safety feature which will stop your operators from tipping it over. So there we have 3.6, 3.7 degrees of side slope now, so it's increased by 0.2. It's poking the boom out, we should get a bit more. We'll probably get that closer to 4 degrees of side slope. So it derates every 1 degree for side slope, so it's, uh, 0 0.6 is 0 to 0 0.6 is firm level ground. Every degree after that, it, it derates up to eight degrees. And uh, at eight degrees, the load's miles outside the width of the crane. And uh, we eliminate quite a few of the, the high boom angle and the long boom angle loads because it, it's just too dangerous. You can't lift anything there anyway. So there you've got four degrees. So I think the worst, we got it to 11 metres of boom, 47 degrees of boom angle before cameras in the dry run. So there's a... Uh, 4.1, 4.2 degrees. So if you put that down now, let's see what the induced roll is. Point 0.8. Yeah. yeah, so it's about a degree of, uh, it's about a degree. In, in, in our tests in Brisbane, we've got two degrees out of it quite you know, in, in uh, big overload and, and, um, and a little bit more side slope. And with a little bit more boom out. Yeah. Mm. So, so I guess the message here is that the operator's getting constant feedback all the time of um, where, where he's at with his load. And uh, that's important. So just, just uh, let's just go back a step again, Cam. I want to show the capacity D rate. So just put it, put it down. So it's 3.4 degrees side slope, 3.3, we're good for 8.1, 8.15. So pick it up again. So, you know, we've gone right around nearly to 90, 90%. So, um, so derated about a tonne. And we lost a tonne of capacity because of the side slope. So, Three and a half thousand cranes in Australia don't do that. They don't derate at all. They stay on the firm level ground chart. And we're, we're starting at three degrees. We're already degraded three times and then we picked up again and the thing's got a bit of side slope so it's derated another tonne. It's, it's um, you know, three and a half thousand cranes don't have dynamic load indicators to measure pitch and roll. And it's, it's not, not safe in my opinion. So we, we took it a step further, further from the dynamic load indicator and we wanted to restrict the steering so that when you did get off the beaten track a bit and you get further out of capacity, that your steering's going to be restricted in the unsafe direction and stop you tipping it over. You want to do the re-manoeuvre, mate, and do yep. the slew safe? So... These things, we, we test them and test them and test them. We've, we put them on a, a, on a tilt slab. We chain them down and we, and we make sure we know the tipping point at, at every, every chart. There's about 80 charts in that little crane.
So what we're going to do here is uh, uh, we'll get it somewhere near 90%. And then we'll slew quite aggressively left and right so that, you can, uh, w that it gets overloaded and you can see when the computer will pull up the steering. Uh, it restricts, once you get to 100%, the oil flow to the hydraulic steering is, re is restricted to 15%. The steering wheel gets quite stiff and stiff to turn and, and you'll see the load slow down dramatically. And it's, 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 the, it's the key feature about this crane that sets us apart. So you'll, you'll, you'll hear an audible alarm when it gets to 90%. And then you got into 100% and the steering's restricted. So you've got unrestricted speed in the safe direction, so the steering wheel's coming back, the load's moving. He's quite aggressive to make it, a d to demonstrate it more effectively. You'll get to 90% now. See the yellow lights come on. Like that. I might have to put a bit more boom out. Right. You're not getting close enough to your capacity. Yeah. So he's keeping the load nice and low. Be 90% in a couple of turns. There's 90 with the yellow lights come on. Pretty dramatic slowdown on the steering. Go back the other way, Cam. And he has full speed that way because that's to safety. He's in the green. You'll hear a beep when it goes to yellow. There's a beep in the cabin and the steering's restricted. So any crane that doesn't have this, the other 4,000 pick and carry cranes in the country can just drive wherever they want once the load's off the ground. No restriction. The, the capacity on the, on the dynamic load indicator machines, which is about 500 of them, they get told that, the, that you're out of capacity but you, you're not restricted in your steering. So we think this is a, a really smart safety feature. Um, did you want to show the 50% D-rate of the... Yeah, okay, just show us the screen we've got now, so... I'll just come into where I'm good for more weight and then we'll D-rate it. Yeah, yeah, that's right, okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring it into... We've got, we're about good for about 14 tonne and then he'll D-rate it to 50% capacity. So you can see that if you're, if you're on a, a Simic job site or anybody's job site and they only want you to go to... 80% or 50%, whatever of your chart, then it's quite easy to do. So, so just to be clear on that, there's a lot of um, instances where larger pick and carry cranes are going on jobs because the, the owner of the job site or the manager of the job site is making the operator derate their crane accordingly. So this particular crane, um, through the service screen by the technician, is we can set it up to derate to a, a lower capacity should that job site require it. And then when you go to another job site, we can reconfigure it back to what the Australian standard says. Just under site restrictions. Can you go back to the screen, Andrew? So he's on a 100% chart there. He can go down in five degree increments to anything down to 20 degrees. Uh, 20 percent so start at 100 we're going to set it at 50 so we were good for about 14 ton before that Cameron so we should yeah, be I good think it was yeah so just to be clear on that Phil when you say 100 percent that's 100 percent of the 66 percent chart yeah uh, either one yeah. If, yeah 
He's got the whole break on, so that's 50% uh, of the uh, stationary chart. So he's, he's good for 7.3 tonne on the, with the whole break on, but he, he'd be overloaded, so he must be good for about 6 tonne on the pick and carry. Just flick the um, whole break off, mate. Yeah, so he's good for 6.5 tonne on the pick and carry. So doesn't matter what your sight restrictions are. It, it's a four-digit code. It's easy to put in. Uh, um, it's a serviceman's code. You can't you can't do anything uh, untoward to the computer. All you can do is derate it. So uh, it's quite a handy tool if you need it on a specific site. So a couple other things that. Um, uh, uh, just hang on a minute, Phil. Uh, Robert just wanted to say something. Can you bring the picture up on the screen? Yeah. So, so one of the things this indicator does, you'll see that the green curve line has a step in it, so that the the, na the narrow inner inner uh, line is actually what you would be on if you're on the 66% pick and carry chart. So you have. At the moment, we're on a 75% chart, so you're good for here as a percentage of your LMI. If, if, you, if you took your whole break off, you would actually be in this position. So this shows you when you get further around that whether you're going to overload or not by taking your whole break off. Yeah, so we think that's pretty, pretty uh, easy, to, easy to understand and easy to talk to an operator about. The other, the other things that were touched on in the introduction was the, um, the deadlock switch in the cabin. The deadlock switch is, replaces your old override button and it, that'll allow you get to 110% capacity, but at 15% speed. So very, very gentle, very safe. Then if you need to go a step further than that, the bridging switch is outside the cabin, at the, at the back of the cabin next to the e-stop. And that's a key switch with the key controlled by the site safety officer. Again, it's only at 15% speed, so if you're going to overload it, you're going to do it very gradually and, uh, and uh, basically taken out of the hands of the operator and, and to the site foreman. That, uh, that times out at 60 minutes and needs to be reset, so it's not something that's like the old one that you can just leave turned on or taped down or pe pegged off. It's, uh, it's outside the cabin and, and not intended to be used. The, um, just harping back on slew safe, slew safe can't be overridden, can't be turned off, can't be tampered with. It's there and, it, and it's, it's a bit like a seatbelt in a car. You, you, you don't need it for 25 years of your life, but that, that one day you need it, it'll pull you up. And it might, be, it might be boggy ground, it might be something that you're unexpected, but it'll be there to, to pull you up and make you rethink about how you've got to do the job when you need it.